Okay, our flagship show on energy on Wednesday at four, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and I'm joined by my co-host, uh, Mitch Ewan. Uh, and, um, and we also have our principal guest is Howard Hall. I'm going to talk about converting farms with hydrogen, right? Ooh, exciting. And we have Melissa Miyashiro now, and she's going to talk about an article that she wrote most recently in Civil Beat. Uh, dealing with statutory incentives and encouragements for electric vehicles, uh, which I thought was a pretty interesting discussion and not necessarily a happy one. <laughs> so what was your article about, Melissa? Yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, I was interviewed by Civil B to talk about the recent EV benefits that sunsetted at the end of June. Uh, so folks that have been following this issue um, know that the only incentives that we had as a state for electric vehicles ended up expiring on June 30th. So those were benefits um, that allowed EV owners and drivers to uh, park free at the airport and also metered and county and city lots um, and also HOV uh, lane access. Um, but the, those HOV lane access perks sound like they're, they're going to stick around, but we were sad to see the EV parking benefits completely evaporate this legislative session. We certainly have not been faithful to the original plan to incentivize electric vehicles. We gave them for a time. We gave them a significant tax break and the federal tax break and the state tax break were really an incentive for sure. Now they, it went away. And um, I, I wonder how you feel, I mean, on an editorial basis, uh, about the gradual loss of the incentives we used to have for electric vehicles. Yeah, we're definitely concerned about the trajectory, especially considering that we're on a track to increase our emissions in the ground transportation sector. Um, so although you know the, the COVID pandemic, we know that uh, gasoline sales are down, but we expect when things get uh, back up and running that people are um, you know, going to continue to get in those gasoline powered vehicles, uh, especially with uh, oil prices dipping so substantially. So this is really the probably the worst time to be cutting incentives for electric vehicles. Well, did, uh, you know, did the legislature say anything about why it was taking a pan on, the, on renewing this uh, statute or they just dropped it? Yeah, it, it's not really clear what happened, to be honest. Um, what's interesting, probably the most controversial piece of the free parking was the free parking at the airport. Um, so uh, EVs were allowed to park at the airport up to 30 days uh, free of charge. Um, and there was a wide consensus among stakeholders that that needed to be tweaked. And there was actually a great version of the bill that passed out um, of the House Committee on Energy and Environmental Protection that took out the airport parking perks. So we thought we were in pretty good shape, um, but then even that version of the bill didn't move forward. So we're not really sure what happened. Well, I hope the COVID passes quickly and we're able to get back to our regular priorities, including clean energy. Uh, let me introduce you to Mitch Ewan. Mitch Ewan cares, uh, cares uh, deeply about hydrogen. He's probably going to ask you about hydrogen and the, and the change in the law making hydrogen cars into electric cars, at least for legal purposes. Am I right, Mitch? Yeah, certainly we uh, fought for six years at least to uh, have a uh, hydrogen electric vehicle designated as an electric vehicle and uh, get all the same uh, benefits that a battery electric vehicle had. And then just as we got it, they ripped the rug out from under our feet. I think we only have about maybe 10 hydrogen electric vehicles in Hawaii. And uh, we're working hard to get more and uh, Howard is going to be uh, helping us in, in that in that way but it's pretty disappointing that uh, you know we set these great goals so oh, by 2035 or we're going to be energy free but then we you know we have a brief uh, effort uh, lots of enthusiasm and then it just dies because we just don't have the staying power we don't have the political will basically we wimped out I think we ought to give them a memory course, you know, maybe they got pills yeah. to remember things. So you don't forget, you know, two years after you started. So Melissa, what message would you like to leave with people? I mean, um, Melissa's chief of staff of Blue Planet, that is something. And uh, I'm sure that it's um, something that you're gonna continue to work on. Um, but what, what is your message to people? What should, what should they think of when this issue comes up? 
I think we really have to look at the overall policy package and the send signal that we're sending as a state on electric vehicles. So, you know, not just looking at the parking benefits in isolation, but what what is our overall plan to decarbonize our ground transportation sector? Um, at least from Blue Planet standpoint, that plan really isn't play and is isn't in place. Um, another piece of legislation that passed last year actually places a $50 surcharge on electric vehicles at the, at the time of registration renewal. So when you look at the, all of this together, the $50 surcharge, the parking benefits expiring, that's really sending the wrong signal about where we wanna go on clean transportation. So we really yeah. want people to look at this holistically. Yeah, that was in your article. That, and that was really kind of a big irritant. So on the one hand, the legislature is not continuing the incentives or thinking of new incentives or visiting the question or revisiting the question of a tax credit. On the other hand, it's taxing owners of electric vehicles by adding a surcharge on. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's a, it's a mixed message at best and more likely it's a negative message. What it's saying is government doesn't care. It, it might've cared before, but it can't remember. <laughs> well, there's always next session. So we'll be back uh, ready to renew these conversations and, and push for changes. Okay, I hope you come back and talk, talk to us about it. Anytime, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Melissa Miyashiro, thanks for coming down. Aloha. Aloha. So I'd like to introduce Howard Hall, my friend from the Big Island. Howard is, uh, lives in Waimea, uh, retired from uh, Hawaii Prep Academy, HPA, where he did a variety of jobs, including uh, you're, you were the head of the math department and you were what, the deputy dean and a whole, you had a whole career at HPA. And uh, Howard owns a small farm, and uh, he's decided to uh, jump on the on the uh, on the future. He's a futurist, and uh, convert his uh, small farm over to hydrogen. So, Howard, welcome to the show. I do. And uh, tell us how you actually discovered hydrogen. <laughs> well, actually, it was through you. Um, I entered, I was introduced to you uh, by our mutual friend David. And um, I listened to you talk there, and that was back in uh, 2018, as I recall, early, about this time of year, in fact, about this time of year. And I um, listened to you talk about what you were doing and the work you did uh, with um, uh, Nelha there and, and uh, basically uh, the, your hydrogen station. And that got me kind of tweaked, but I was okay with that. And then another item, I, I, what happened to this whole thing is very serendipitous. It's lots of little things that come along and all of a sudden, bam, 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 bam. And the second thing that happened was um, and, uh, near the end of that summer of 2018, um, the Hawaii Preparatory Academy uh, called me because I'd been retired from there. I'd worked there for 40 years. And uh, they called me and, and wanted to know if I would be willing to participate in a sort of a, um, uh, they call it the, a sustainable sustainability plan and they were going to do some brainstorming and they wanted to know if I would participate in this brainstorming session. And I said, sure, I'd like to. At that point, I was not quite sure where they were going with their sustainability. And as I was getting into that, I was talking more and more with you and I was beginning to think, hmm, you know, there's something here that maybe we can do at HPA because as I got into the sustainability plan process, um, I found out that uh, HPA, we have a state-of-the-art um, energy lab. Uh, we already have a photovoltaic on the campus uh, sufficient to, during the day, uh, push back against Hilco, Helco and virtually our, our energy-free um, green, let's put it that way, with uh, photovoltaic. And so I started thinking, well, this is, this is getting really interesting. Uh, maybe hydrogen could play a part in the school uh, situation. Then. Um, near the end of 2018, there was a conference down in, in Kona, and you were a presenter at that conference. And so I um, uh, opted to, to attend the conference, a two-day conference, went down there, and that was my aha moment. Um, listening not only to you and then uh, touring your station there behind you, um, and listening to the uh, other issues that were going on with energy in this state, as well as nationally, because these guys were all over the country that came to this conference. And what I learned was the old paradigm 
of you generate power, you push it down some wires called the grid, and the consumer uses it the other end, um, was dead. Uh, the consumer is now doing a pushback. The consumer is shoving back at you. And the utilities are absolutely flabbergasted what to do about this. And so it became, the conference became, and I think the title of it was Energy Storage Trends, okay? And so we looked at all kinds of storage ideas, batteries and so on and so forth. But then what, what became clear in, uh, in that conference and through your presentation and everything else is that hydrogen, you can store a tremendous amount of energy in the form of hydrogen and it's portable. For that same energy to be in a form of a battery and you try to move it, you know, that's just ridiculous. But you can put it into gaseous form and compress it and you can move it around. So you have a portable, very powerful energy storage system. So then I began to think, okay, this is what I want to propose to HPA. So as we got into the early part of 2019, I was involved in the final drafting of their plan. And I was able to at least, because there were lots of other people pushing a lot of other ideas. And my plan was, okay, HPA, you're going to basically take your excess electricity, push it into batteries so you can get through the night and then start making hydrogen. And that hydrogen can be used to run some um, uh, cooking in the kitchen because our kitchen has to serve 400 people three times a day. And we can also then begin to convert the school vehicles into you know, the buses and, and maintenance and so forth into hydrogen powered vehicles. And so um, that's where I was going with that. Well, then we get into the later part of uh, uh, 2019. Um, we start getting into 2019. And um, I at that point left the, the, the whole process now was in the hands of the Board of Governors. So I was left with the idea of, OK, you know, this is exciting stuff. This is really cool. And um, thinking that, OK, I kept telling the school, this is really easy. Let's just do this. Let's just do it. You know, as a part of all that process, we had gone up and visited um, the Blue Planet Research. And uh, Paul, you know, Ponte, you uh, gave it, you know, he's just been fabulous in showing what can be done, although that's on a big scale. Uh, but I kept thinking, OK, maybe I can do something similar to that. And so my wife and I decided, all right, we will try to do a mini system on our farm. So that's how we got there was through the school, through meeting you through this aha moment of recognizing that many grids are really what is needed in, in the utility world. Uh, so that uh, like, you know, you take Google uh, uh, campus, you take Apple campus, you can take uh, facilities that are factories and whatever, they can set themselves up as a mini grid, mini hour with fuel cell, um, but they're running their fuel cells, you know, with uh, converting um, um, the natural gas. What we want to be is really, truly 100% on our farm, 100% green energy. So we want to basically set up our farm where we're going to have um, the uh, photovoltaic power. We'll have enough of that to begin to then look at making uh, hydrogen. And then uh, we will then move on into how we use that hydrogen. And I'd like to, at this point, probably bring up um, your uh, schematic that you had made for us. What happened here was that um, in that letter part of 2018, we came up with, I, I started laying out what I would call the plan and the plan of what we could do on our farm. And as we look at your, your schematic that you then took my plan and did a beautiful job of laying it out, um, as of this year, 2020, all right, uh, basically, we've gotten the whole upper left-hand side of that done. We've, um, we have the Blue Ion uh, battery system. We have the inverter system. We have our uh, load center all set up and feeding the current loads of the farm. Um, and we have uh, basically gotten all of that set up. So uh, we can come back to this drawing in just a minute, but I'd like to then go to the second uh, picture we had, which is of the uh, panels on the roof. Maybe do the panels on the roof first. Yeah. So here's the roof of the barn. All right. And we have right now um, in the vicinity of uh, with all the panels and the old system, which you can't see. It's even more to the right of that uh, uh, photo. But I've got about uh, 10,000 uh, kilowatts on the roof right now. 
with room uh, for another 3,800 uh, uh, up there. Um, so as we get into the designing of what, just what I need to make the hydrogen, I have at least the power. And then we've got the blue ion. Now switch to the blue ion uh, photo. That is the coolest little beast in the world. And so we got 16 kilowatt hours there of, um, of storage um, and our outback uh, distribution uh, converting into the, our AC loads down the line. So that's all now in place. Okay, so when we've got to that point, that's phase one, I call it, of the plan. And uh, phase one could be standalone because I needed additional power. The power I had an, um, uh, installed originally uh, was minimal. It got us by with lights and, and power tools in the shop, but it didn't, it didn't really cut it as far as anything more than that. So this now gives me the ability to add some other tools in the shop, but then once we stabilize that and take a look at what's going on, we'll decide whether to add the additional panels now or add panels at a later date. Um, but we'll now move into phase two. Phase two is the, um, the hydrogen side. And so let's there, start with that. Let's yeah. start with the pneumatic. Sorry, Say again? There you go. Yeah, what, I didn't hear you. What? No, we just put up the schematic so you can talk. Oh, about yeah. It. Okay. So, yeah, switch back to the schematic. Thank you. Um, so basically, we want, to, we want to now work on that left uh, right hand side. And it's actually in two parts in my mind. Uh, part one is the electrolyzer and, um, and producing the hydrogen and storing it and having it ready for the farm operation, which is really what this, this whole discussion here is really about, is that uh, David, our mutual friend, has probably developed the finest coffee in the state, if not nationally or worldwide, but truly uh, from my tasting of it, it's the best coffee anywhere. And uh, what his goal is, and I, I fully support it, is he would like to be able to say that his coffee is uh, manufactured and handled totally green, 100% green. Uh, in other words, all of the machinery that we would be putting into a future um, uh, uh, coffee processing facility would be run by electricity generated by hydrogen or supported by hydrogen generated through PV and that the roasting will be done by hydrogen as well. So that's, that's the downstream side and that doesn't require high pressure, right? We can store the, the um, hydrogen in a fairly low pressure systems similar to what they do up at uh, Puvava Ranch uh, that Paul does. The third phase would be then the Toyota Mirai, or it might be a, a Nikola Badger, uh, who knows what's coming down the pike right now. There are cars out there, people, and manufacturers out there talking about uh, producing uh, hydrogen-based um, cars. Um, in your earlier discussion, I, I, I don't know if I'm off base, but I, as far as I'm concerned, hydrogen car is an electric vehicle because it does run with the battery all the fuel cell is doing is charging it instead of like my Prius, I have a gas engine that charges it. Well, here you just would have the hydrogen doing the charging, but it's still an EV. I mean, you know, in my mind, anyhow. So the third phase would be that I would then decide to buy a Mirai, a Badger or something. And then we need to move into the high pressure and come up with high pressure. So um, I got to talking with uh, Chris McWinney uh, who I think has been on your show before, and um, neat guy, really super guy. And um, he uh, walked me through uh, what you might call the five steps to hydrogen. Okay, <laughs> You got to make it, then you got to purify it, then you got to store it, and then you got to compress it, and then you have to have some di dispensing medium. Now, in between there, at some point, you can store it at low pressure, as I said, and roasting. But so far, if from his point of view, because he's building systems, his Millennium Rain systems, he's building those for almost, you know, certainly uh, operations like mine. I mean, he's building them almost for residential situations. And so let's say you're in some part of the country where you have hydroelectric. It's, you know, totally cheap electricity. It might be feasible to actually make your hydrogen um, in one of his systems and use that. 
But if you're in Hawaii where you're getting your power out of, you know, Helco, which is all diesel, that that's a different paradigm. So what we do is we look at PV or geothermal. And you've talked about all this stuff before, and you, I'm totally sold, totally sold. So if I can get my little farm to operate, then it's a proof of concept. It's a proof of concept that I can take back to HPA and I can say, okay, you've said that you will buy into my idea of energy independence and you've put a date on it of 2030. I'd like to speed that up a tad, <laughs> that's what I'd like to do. And so if I can show them the steps and the stuff and the people, you know, the people like you and you and Paul and, and Chris, and I, if I can show them that, because I did take a lot of board members up to uh, Pulavara Ranch and they came back, 100% of them came back enthusiastic, okay? Um, and it was, it was, um, it was I, very comforting for me to, to, to see that, all right? But again, you know, the board has got a different, different ball game now. We had a new headmaster come on at the end of 2019. So he comes on and what ha happens now? Bam, COVID-19 and the whole issue of HPA and you know, it's a boarding school. And what do you do about kids next year? They have a lot of other stuff on their plate that they're going to have to deal with right now. And so I'm isolated out here on my farm. So why not? I can sit down and, and do this. And uh, uh, that's the plan is to basically do the coffee. All right. 100% green produced. No fossil fuel except for maybe my diesel tractors. But once it's in the ground, my, my diesels are out of the way and it's all 100% coffee. The, even the electric cart, the club car, all right, will be charged from the Blue Iron. Okay, so everything on that is touching or dealing with his coffee will be 100% green and hydrogen based. Does that make sense? Totally, Howard. So. Um what kind of an investment of this? I mean, this was a pretty major decision for you to make, like, you know, and uh, you obviously had to have buy-in from your wife, Pat. So yeah, the boss talk, right talk here. a little bit yeah. about that. <laughs> okay, so that's a really fair question, a really good one. <clears throat> an awful lot of uh, decisions you make in, in any business or any situation is, you know, a return on investment, your ROI. You're looking at, okay, I mean, I had a son-in-law who was in the drywall business and he would often come back with an attitude of, hey, uh, I need this new um, spray rig uh, because it'll pay for itself on the first job. Well, if it didn't pay for itself in the first job, there's a good chance it probably would pay for itself on the second or third job. But the idea was it was going to pay for itself. So you're always looking for, even when I put the PV on this house above me um, and I got a NEEM agreement with Helco, at that time, Helco was saying, you know, we, we're, we're not sure we can give you that contract. And uh, finally, I, I was able to get it because it's not a matter they were just denying it. They just weren't prepared for the pushback, which I learned from that conference. That was the aha. I now understood why Hilco was saying the things they were saying. At any rate, when I put that on the roof, I was able to easily show that in a matter of about four or five years, I'd have paid, paid off that investment. And I was writing on somebody else's dime, you know, like putting in a quarter and a, jute in a, in a slot machine in Las Vegas. You know, you pay on the other guy's money. But in, in this situation, the way I see it and the way my wife and I see it, actually, is that it's it's more like um, your boat, if you want to buy a boat or if you want to go play golf and really get into the game and travel around and play golf. Or maybe at my age of 81, you know, I'd be out uh, taking cruises and seeing the sights around the world. Honestly. I'd rather take that expense and put it into this because this is worth doing. It's important. It's, and it's something I think I can do. And I think that's why I'm trying to do it is that it's not something that requires either a, a big investment like Hank does up there at Uva Uva, um, and it's And it's not something that requires um, even the infrastructure that we're trying to get in place of, you know, like California is doing with, uh, hydrogen fuel stations uh, up and down the state. And that's what Chris um, McMinney and McWinney wants to do. He wants to get, you know, several uh, hydrogen stations on this island. That would be super. But how are I, you the first one? Well, not really. I mean, if you think about Mitch, he's got his down at, in Elha. I'm, I'm talking about a farm. 
Oh, farm. I, as far as I know, I, uh, there's, there's Puvava Ranch and I'm the third. As far as I know, I'm the third. So are you connected to the grid? Are you connected to the grid? At the farm? No, no. I'm 100%. Uh, if, and that's another good point, Jay. In the initial cost at the farm, it's not just that it's a cool thing to do and it's really exciting, but there was a, the whole idea of energy out at the farm was also avoided costs. I was at such a distance from Hillco lines in the farm lots that the cost of putting power poles, besides being unsightly, the power poles down and across my property, all right, or the digging of a trench and putting in conduits according to you know specs, all of that was so expensive. When I had them uh, give me quotes, I said, I'm better off with putting in tons of PV, all right, uh, at that cost. So it was avoided costs, and 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 that's how I justified it. So so when you look at this in terms of uh, what it would cost you, what it has cost you to do this project, as opposed to what you would be paying, you know, bring the power out and to pay the electric bill every month. And by the way, what did I see this morning? The average cost uh, um, of a kilowatt hour on a big island is like 34.7 cents. That sticks in my brain. Yeah, That's yeah, really high. high. Uh, yeah. And so if you if you had to pay monthly, you know, for the same uh, amount of, of energy, plus the, the cost of bringing it on your land, uh, am I right? Uh, is, this isn't this isn't really just a hobby. This would be the, the hydrogen would be uh, over time anyway the the cheapest way to go uh, well, relative it, to the, yeah. you know using Helco. At this point, Jay, it's it's up to the up to the um, blue ion battery. Okay, clearly I could add a, a bunch more blue ion batteries actually, and and more panels on the roof, and I still am under those costs. Where it gets into the world of the golf game and the, those other deferred expenses is when I start looking at buying a Marai. That doesn't have a lot to do with making coffee no. or, or growing my limes. You, know, you don't really need that. I mean, no, that, I, that's I, nice, but. Uh, now that the Nikola truck, I might be able to some <laughs> way to call it a try, you know, farm truck, but uh, I do Tahitian limes and uh, uh, no, I, the, the, the Marai and the cost of the high pressure system, that cost, once I get to that point, we're prepared to do that based on mostly that it's just cool thing and to do. And that would be the, that would be the, 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 the cruises, the golf game, the, um, the, the, the yacht and the Harbor type of expense. Instead, I'm just forget about cruises for now, Howard. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> absolutely. I'm with you. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So well, what about the notion of financing it? In other words, the difference between doing the deal with, um, you know, getting on the grid and paying electric bill every month and all that, and, 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 and installing all this hydrogen stuff off the, um, off the, off the, uh, the, the, the chart that we looked at, the, the map right. that we looked at, is that when you, when you install it off the, the map, it, it costs you up front. Um, so did you finance it? Is there a way to finance it? Do you recommend financing it? There is a way to recommend, uh, there is a way to, uh, to finance it. It has been recommended to me. I have seen the, the um, uh, process by which you go through uh, to, to uh, do this. But um, what I decided is that, well, a couple things happened, but one was that the process required that you had some already perfectly well drawn out plan like what mitch had to do to build the system that's in there behind him his his uh, nail house system uh, that had to be to the nat's eyebrow laid out already i'm doing a proof of concept i'm doing almost like an experimental aircraft i'm tweet as i'm moving along i'm, I'm running into problems i solve the problem i tweak it and these these um um uh, processes by which you can get it financed require a more detailed uh, plan, you know, uh, business plan than I'm able to actually produce for what I'm trying to do. Um, uh, when I get to the final, the big, the big ticket items, which would be the compressor and the Mirai, um, at that point, um, I facetiously tell my children, I, I, instead of leaving you anything in, in the way of cash, I'm going to leave you 
an idea and a concept. I'm taking your, your retirement, I'm taking your, your inheritance. And I'm going to take I know they will understand. <laughs> you, you mentioned, Howard, that, um, you know, this is a what coffee farm talking about or what? Well, it's a the Tijan lime farm right now. It's been also a pumpkin and um, truck, cro truck crops. And now, uh, recently, the last few years, uh, we're building out a, uh, actually, David is building out a um, coffee farm. He may be a future uh, speaker here on your show and mm -hmm. he can go into more detail about what he's doing, but he's done an amazing job and I totally support it. And I, I really feel that, that this would be a, a great way because if, if, if he does what he's planning to do, there's going to be a tremendous amount of um, uh, processing going on and I need to have the power to do that. And that power would be best served by the use of hydrogen. Okay. Yeah, that was that was my point. So you're developing a, a kind of a kind of system here um, with the notion, and I'm sure you would cooperate. As these people have helped you, advised you, consulted with you, Mitch and the others, um, you would talk to other farmers or possible farmers oh, yeah. oh, and absolutely. help them. And yeah. so the question is, um, how how much different would this system be for a sort of more classical farm? Uh, where you need a lot of water and you have to pump the water out there, where you need, you need different energy requirements. How would you tweak the system for a different kind of farm, different kind of crops? That's an excellent question. Um, the, I can tell you that, as I said, I think I'm going to be the third if I can get this ahead of, uh, I have another friend of mine who uh, is wanting to do, he's now seen what I'm trying to do. And he says, I want to do this on my ranch. And he's cattle, he's a cattle operator. And um, so that's a very good question, but he already has wind, all right? So he has a source of, and he's got a great location for uh, photovoltaic. Um, and so he's in a great position to, to uh, build out the, the uh, collection of uh, excess uh, electricity and then go into the hydrogen. And uh, again, it would be what, like in our case, it would be machinery that's processing coffee. All right, that would be use the electricity and the roasting. In a, in a uh, cattle operation, it might be a hard sell, but he's on board just because of the same reasons I love it. It's just the right thing to do. It is so now. It has to happen. All right. And so um, he's more interested in uh, the show and tell, I think, side of it. Um, and and um, maybe because they have trucks and they have so forth. Uh, and of course, they are talking about electric trucks. And, you know, uh, Elon is out there doing his thing. And so, we might see an electric cattle hauling truck up there all right, that is either supported by hydrogen um, uh, backup or has hydrogen fuel cell augmented. Um, and so that would be, you know, ways of selling it. But right now, at least in his case, it's that way. Now you take the other, I'm treasurer of our Lalamila Farm Lots Association. And most of the farmers out there are hardworking uh, guys who are uh, producing, you know, cabbage and, and so forth. And um, again, the only thing out there really is their diesel tractor, all right, and which has probably been there for you know quite a few years. They get a lot of mileage out of their tractors, and um, and their farm truck delivery. Now that truck could be converted to to hydrogen, but then they'll have to get it somewhere. So I'm not wanting to set myself up like I was pitching to the school to HPA. I was pitching that their process would eventually get to the point where they because they have land right on the highway. They could easily set up a fuel station that would not only fill all of the school vehicles, but the teacher school vehicles, as well as parent school vehicles, as well as maybe the county um, Helion buses, which will be hydrogen. But they do uh, agriculture also? The school? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have a, a, a school garden. Yeah. Mm, okay. I mean, after all, we have to become self-sustaining oh, at yeah. some point, sooner the better. One other thing I wanted to ask you before we, we, we get a summary from Mitch about all this, because <laughs> he's in a great place to summarize. Um, did you consider uh, wind? Uh, were, were there any obstacles that prevented you from doing wind? Yes. Um, I, wind, I, I'm, I like wind. And I've, I've, as we have traveled across the country, I've been in every state of the union, and, and I, we've seen wind everywhere. And I love the fact that wind can be so compatible with agriculture because you can still farm under it. You can graze cattle under it. You know, it doesn't, it, it really, and it makes no noise. 
and contrary to a lot of people who think it does. And so basically wind was something, but I, my farm is in a little bit of a hollow. And so I, to get a good wind regime onto that uh, blade, I'd have to be pretty tall, you know, and that would be a pretty big thing <laughs> in our neighborhood. And I didn't want that sticking out like a huge sore thumb. We've got uh, some wind generators. You've been, you've been a NIMBY sore thumb. <laughs> well, the, the ones in, at uh, Pueblo Point became contentious. And was oh, that right? I'm familiar with those. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. they became contentious, and and uh, I was involved a little bit in trying to come up with a way to mitigate that. And um, and uh, you don't hear too much more about it. But the issue is, you, you oh, we love it, but not in my backyard. To me, I think wind generators are cool. But mm -hmm. the only thing I can, I, and I tried wind. I have, I don't know if that uh, photo that I had of the barn. You'll see an uh, air motor. Uh, well, no, not air motor. Um, that's one that's still in the box. Um, but I have a, I have, I have some classic wind generators, but they're not up. I've got a, uh, a Jacob, uh, original Jacob, and uh, 1932 Jacob. And when I meant, when I meant Jacob, when I met Jacob in person here on the Big Island, I said, "Oh, you know, I got one of your original ones that went to South, you know, South Pole." And he says, "Oh, that was a good, that was a good wind. <laughs> spruce blades." We got to talking about that. So I really like wind. I totally like wind, but I'm in a hollow, and it just didn't seem practical in order to get the wind regime I'm going to need. I'd have you know, to one one thought for you is when when you help other people, other farmers. Um, build their systems, build their hydrogen systems, right, right. Uh, and they're not in a holler, uh, and they're in <laughs> flat plane, and there's oh, not there's a, a lot of neighbors around, you know, yeah. that, that would be something to consider. Okay, we're out of time, Mitch. Can you, I know you're going to be well able to do this. Can you summarize this for our viewers? Yeah, I'll very quickly summarize it. We're really uh, fortunate to have Howard Hall, a true pioneer with a pioneering spirit, who's willing to put his money where his mouth is, or right. he coined the phrase, to uh, step my heart, up my heart and, uh, is. <laughs> and demonstrate uh, that this can be done. And uh, providing a, uh, a really good resource, uh, the one thing we didn't talk about was uh, the fact that you can leverage this and show the other, the rest of the community right. how to do it. And how are the types of people that we need in this game to spread the word? So thank you very much, Howard, and telling Pleasure. us how to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Love to come around with a camera and, uh, you know, and, and do a little study of what you've got. That would be valuable for a win, win, win. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I, I would love to get the, the, to my next stage. I'm at that point where we're working on, on um, the tankage and, and the, the electrolyzer. Sorry. There we go. The electrolyzer and all that. Once I get that in place or ready to go, then I'd be ready to, to say, okay, here's okay. our. Here's doing it's a right day now, just waiting okay thank you howard howard hill Pleasure. and thank mitch you and thank you very much you guys this was a great discussion really an eye-opener good for you aloha everybody aloha. take care